This is a Europhile review of Bangkok Klongs, a tile-laying game by Martin Schlegel. Um, it's a game which I think has been overlooked, rather, um, because it is a, a quality game, but you don't hear very much about it. The main thing that sold me on the game and, and, and caused me to buy the game instantly was these the beautiful graphics on these little boat-shaped tiles, and there's a whole host of these, you can see them over here. Um, I mean, that in itself, these are these are great pieces, and that really sort of immediately caught my attention. The artist is Clemens Franz, who does the art for, um, or did the art for the Harvest Trilogy, Agricola at the Gates of Loyang, etc., and many, many other games. Fantastic artist, always attracts my interest in a game when I know that he's involved. This is a game for two to four players, plays in under an hour, lots of strategic choices, quite a puzzly sort of game, pretty abstract really, despite the lovely artwork. The Klongs that we're talking about here are canals in Bangkok where the market traders take their boats full of resources out to market and try and find the best spots to gain the most income at the end of the day. I'll show you a little bit of how the game plays and then I'll talk you through my thoughts on the game. There are two stacks of tiles which are used in, uh, in the game of Bangkok Klongs. In the basic game you just have one combined stack, but I think the added strategy in the advanced variant makes the game much more satisfying, so, so I'm looking particularly at that. These tiles over here are empty boats. Um, so they are boats where, uh, where you can place your own meeples inside the boat in order to claim them. These ones are not empty, they're already occupied, um, and they tend to have special abilities. So you'll have thieves and cook shops and inspectors um, all in that uh, selection. Now at the start of the game, each player has th uh, four tiles, three from the standard deck and one from the special action deck. Um, so these are the four belonging to the yellow player, and currently we're going to look at a two-player game between yellow and blue. So he has these, uh, I don't know what they are, shrimps are they? Um, there's bananas there, and um, aubergines, and then he has an inspector um, who's looking out for thieves. These baskets are important, they're the things that are really going to score you points. So that double basket is quite nice. And this symbol is also relevant because that's going to advance the track here where that symbol is there scoring points. And once it reaches the point with the symbol on it, then we'll have a market day where all the points um, start to add up for the various goods. So that's Yellow's hand of tiles. Blue's hand of tiles, well he has some flowers, he has these... Um, I don't know what they are, are they avocados or something like that? I'm not sure. Um, more flowers and more flowers, so that's that's quite good for him. And this one's a three basket um, tile, so, so, so that's particularly good. Um, what the player does on, his, on the first turn is they'll have to place a tile onto the board. And initially, the player is going to have to place on one of these light coloured spaces. So what yellow might do, for example, is place this um, boat with bananas on there, and he'll place one of his tokens on there. Then he draws a new card into his hand from either deck, so I think he'll just take a standard, um, a standard tile from the standard deck, and he's got this one. So that'll go into his hand. It's now the blue player's turn, and he's going to place on the other light-coloured space, so he's going to go on there and place his little meeple on that space. Um, and then he draws a tile, and the tile he's drawn is this one, which isn't really so great. And so this will continue with them placing tiles um, until some scoring starts to happen. So let's have a look at what happens if yellow places this one. He probably wouldn't place it yet because the inspectors only really come into play when there's a thief around. But this token is important because the fact that we have this, what's called the I don't know how to pronounce it, the luck fat um, token means that we advance the marker up here and instantly that'll score the yellow player um, it'll score the yellow player six points because there's six points on the track there and uh, yellow will advance along the track to number six. Um, 
it, it also moves us closer towards having a market. Now let's have a little look at what would happen if we did have a market. So a market would happen when there were tiles which were all placed around a central point like this for example. So if we have a blue on there and maybe a yellow one here and a yellow one here. Well supposing that we had got this token up to number three up here um, then we would have what's called a little market day and there'll be some scoring. There's going to be lots of these situations by that point where there's four boats around a central point but each player will be able to score two of these areas so yellow might choose to place the little token on there to say this is what he's scoring first. Now what he scores is the number of baskets in this space so that's one two three four five six seven multiplied by the number of meeples he's got there so yellow would score 14 points for that situation whereas blue has only got one meeple in there but he's still going to score even though it was yellow who selected the space so blue would get one two three four five six seven points then blue would select a region, you know, we might choose over here if there were four around it, and then yellow again, then blue again, and then we carry on with the regular game placing tiles. The other thing that happens at this point, once the scoring has happened, is yellow, who chose to score this region, can remove one of his own tiles from the board and put it into storage. So he might want to collect aubergines, for example. So he could take this aubergine tile off and place it into his own supply. Now at the end of the game, these tiles placed in the supply are going to give the player points. So the first aubergine boat that he has would be worth one point, the second aubergine boat he has would be worth two points, the third would be worth three points, and so on. So collecting boats with the same um, vegetables on them is a good strategy to get yourself a lot of points at the end of the game. Towards the end of the game, when scoring starts to happen in what's called the big market day, you can start to take neutral boats off the board, not just your own. So a player could take this, for example, and add these flowers to a collection of flowers that they were building up. There are other things you can do during the game. I mean, the tile placement generally is that you have to place adjacent, so all the tiles are going to be connected up. Um, you can only ever have a maximum of three tiles in any one section of the board, um, they're called a market hood. So this little selection of four here in between the different um, planks here, that would you couldn't then place one in here. Twice during the game, you can play a, a, a sort of motorboat tile, which would let you move one of your pieces um, just sort of one space, which might open up more strategic possibilities for you. Uh, here, I've placed a thief. So uh, this token, if you place this, you could steal a tile anywhere in this row. Now that tile is most likely going to be one of your opponent's tiles or a neutral tile. So I could, for example, steal this one if I wanted to collect fish and take that off the board. But my opponent might later choose to play an inspector tile. And if this inspector tile was placed up here, the inspector looks in this plane and if there's a thief in the way, then the thief will be removed from the board and that player could either take it into his hand to use it later or discard it from the game. So you can combat the thieves um, and that's a nice little touch in the game as well. There are also pieces which represent cook shops. Uh, I'm just trying to find one of those pieces. Here it is, a cook shop. So when you have a cook shop tile, so supposing that was in there, um, what that does is doubles the values of all the baskets. So now there's one, two, three, four, five, six baskets in this selection here, but it counts as 12 baskets from the point of view of scoring. So now with only two meeples in here, each of these would get 12 points when that area was scored. So the cook shops are particularly valuable if you can build up a, an area where you've only got your own coloured meeples in there. Now we've got a situation where yellow is scoring 24 and blue is scoring nothing. What you'll find throughout the game is that this board will really fill up with pieces long before we get to the top of the look fat chart up to here where we have the large market day 
and the game ends. And at that point, people will already have built up a lot of scores by going up this track, so the scores will be quite a long way round. We'll have had um, a couple of small market days, so you know players will be quite a long way round the score track. And then that final scoring kicks in, where they add up their combination of different tiles. So you know a player has got a selection of different um, of different tiles. So he's got you know one aubergine tile, he's got a second one for two points, that's three points now, then this one's worth three points, so that's six points, if he had any more it'd be up to ten points, fifteen points, you know, these really mount up and the points just pile on at the end of the game. Bangkok Klongs is a tile laying game, but at its heart I think it has more in common with abstract games than it does with tile laying games like um, Carcassonne or Oregon or Tigris and Euphrates or those sort of things. This is more about positioning your tile in the best possible place to to score points. I know you could say that about any of those games, couldn't you? Um, I don't know what it is about this that makes me think it's slightly different. Perhaps it's the set collecting aspect of it, taking those tiles back off the board and trying to build up a selection of them so you're placing them on but you're also removing them and the lack of a sort of positional Thing where you don't have to connect up roads or rivers or anything like that. You know, you can place a tile adjacent to another tile um, and they don't have to sort of fit together. We've got that grid on the board that we're, we're relying on to tell us where we can place them. It's an excellent game. It's an overlooked game. Um, it's the sort of game that you um, might struggle to find, but you also might find it as a bargain somewhere because people have it in stock and, you know, and... <laughs> No one's buying it, and and they should be. Um, I've got very few games which are as beautiful as this when they're all laid out on the board. Clemens Franz's artwork is just stunning. Um, the back of the board has this lovely black and white version of this image on it, um, which is a really nice touch. Um, the components are tactile, those tiles are nice and thick. Um, I would recommend that you play the strategy version, the advanced variant, rather than the, the tiles all mixed in together, but um, but it is nice to have that slightly easier variant if, if you do have people who are going to struggle with the strategy um, involved in your group. But, you know, all in all, I think it's a, I always think it's a shame when games are overlooked, when, when they don't quite reach their potential, um, and I think you could do a lot worse than have a look at Bangkok Klongs.